Okay. Um, all right, lecture three, two, week three, Wednesday, and we're gonna talk about tuples. Okay, so it's like, oh, you, can you have a whole lecture on tuples? Kinda, all right? So tuples, let me, let me actually here. Let's restart and clear everything. So tuples are like lists, and they are in order, and you can, um, they can contain different types of data. Um, yeah, tuples are in order, they preserve their order, but a key difference is that tuples are immutable, whereas lists are mutable. So lists, you can append things to the list, you can reassign or change the value at the list, so you can do like L, you know, square bracket one, and change the value at square bracket one to something else, and you can assign things. With tuples, you can't. You can't uh, modify values in a tuple. You cannot append values to a tuple. You can't do any of that kind of stuff. How do you make a tuple? Um, you can just, if you don't specify anything, if you just start typing out commas, Python's going to go, oh, well, I better gather these together into a tuple. So this is one way to do it. You don't have to use parentheses, and you can do a T there. Um, and this will create a tuple, and you can tell it's a tuple because you've got parentheses, right? So if you've got square brackets, it's a list. You have parentheses, it's a tuple. So you have to, you know, these small differences make a, are, are very different, you know, in Python. So if it's parentheses, tuple, um, square bracket, list. Um, you can also create a tuple using parentheses, and it will, and that will also make a tuple. All right, so these are so here I'm just recreating an entirely new tuple and replacing this tuple here. So I'm not modifying it. I'm just creating an entirely new one and replacing, um, you know, taking that name T and having it point to this object. You can create a tuple with just one value um, by putting a tra you have to put in a trailing comma. So if you do this, this will be a tuple, and we will know it's a tuple because it's got this trailing comma. Where, um, and you can say, all right, what is this? And if you ask, you know, what is the type? It's going to come back and it's going to say tuple. What is its length? And it, it's a length of one. So that's that's what we want. If you don't put in that top trailing comma, um, then what is the type of T2 here? String, OK? It's going to just treat this as a string. So it's not going to recognize this as a tuple. Without the uh, without the training comma, so you have to put in that training comma for it to um, be recognized um, as a tuple. Okay, uh, you can also just create an empty tuple uh, as such. So you can just do tuple, and you can use tuple to take other things and turn them into a tuple. So if I do tuple on this string, what am I going to get? Is going to get, yep, H H E L L O, um, all separated out. So uh, Python kind of take takes these strings as uh, as text iterables, and uh, and that's what we have. Uh, you can do range five. So much like, you know, this looks going to look like if we did range five on list. You know, we would get zero one two three four, and it's going to be the same thing except now it just has parentheses zero one two three four. Okay, you can take a list and you can throw it into tuple, and you get exactly that. Okay. Um, indexing rules apply. So you can take this tuple and you say, give me the thing at index one, and you'll get back the string apple, right? And then if you slice it, so what am I going to get when I slice? I'm going to get two cat dog, and it's going to be a tuple. Okay, so you can slice a tuple as well. So this is all all's the same, right, as, uh, as when we were doing um, lists. Okay, so here are some examples of how tuples and lists are different. Tuples are mutable, whereas lists are mutable, <laughs> which is like a weird word to say. Um, okay, so with the list, I can say, all right, let's take the value at index 0, currently uh, 0, and let's change it to 100, and let's print out the resulting list, and we change that first value to 100, no problem. Okay, you try to do something like that with the tuple. So if I, I have the same thing with but a tuple, 
And if I say if I try to do that, I get I get back an error. Type error. Tuple object does not support item assignment. Right. So this says you know this thing that you're trying to do, assigning a value to index zero, that just doesn't work with this type of data. Working with a tuple, it's not gonna it's not gonna happen. Um, any of these uh, methods that we have for lists that modify the list, such as pop or append, insert, all of those kinds of things, they, 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 those methods just don't ex exist, right? So if I say append x, I can take x and add it to the list L. Um, if I try to append x to the tuple, I just get, I get this error that just says tuple has no attribute append, okay? There's no method or attribute um, or the tuple that let, lets us do something like this, okay? Um, you can't modify the elements, but if you wanted, like if we wanted to change kind of the first element in this tuple from zero to capital A, I could just replace the tuple entirely. So I could take a tuple here, and then I am allowed to kind of just take two different tuples and uh, concatenate them together using the plus operator. So this will just create an entirely new <coughs> tuple, and I can take that thing and assign it back to the name T, right? And uh, and here we have this. But this is not modifying the tuple. I'm just saying, all right, we're gonna just take this part, and we're gonna take this part and put them together, right? It's like taking, it's like tearing pages out of a book, tearing pages out of another book, and just kind of stapling them together, and that's fine. You're not actually changing the. Uh, the contents in any of those things. We're just making an um, entirely new tuple. Um, okay. You can, you can ask. <laughs> um, so the relational operators uh, work with tuples. They also work with other sequences. And the way it works is Python starts by comparing the first element from each sequence, and if they're equal, it goes to the next element, and so on and so forth. Uh, it's kind of like if you had to alphabetize words, how do you do it? You compare the first letter, and if the first letter is the same, you go to the second letter, and if you, the second letter is the same, you go to the third letter, and so on and so forth. So if you can think of tuples as kind of like uh, you know, a sequence of, I guess, character values, but not, they're not exactly like that, it kind of works. So, so is this true? 0, 1, 2, is that less than 0, 3, 4? It is, right? Because the 0 is tied, and then you go to the 1, is the 1 less than the 3? It is, and, and that's all we need to reach. Once, uh, once that is, we go, oh yeah, that's true, okay? So that's going to come back true. What about this? 0, 1, I don't know, 2 million, is that less than 0, 3, 4? 0, 1, 2 million, 0, 3, 4. Yes, so again, in alphabetical order, you compare the 0 with the 0, and then you compare the 1 with the 3, and then and that's the same uh, versus, uh, you know, and then so it doesn't, the, the final comparison doesn't matter, right? So this would be kind of like... Um, Um, like what would what, what would be a comp comparable like word comparison um, if we have like um, you know ABZ which comes first ABZ or you know AC ACD okay so even though the Z comes after the alphabet for everyone else if we had to alphabetize these ABZ would come before ACD right because you, uh, you know letter order the, the second order letter is more important Right. What about this? 0, 0502 less than 034. That's going to be false because the 500 is bigger than the 3. Okay. And um, what about uh, tuple ABC and tuple ABCD? Okay. Well, that, that will be true, right? And we can kind of, you know, what about ACE? Okay. That's going to be false, right? So this is kind of just like, you know, you take. If you put these in alphabetical order, um, A, B, C, D would come before A, C, A alphabetically, and um, and so if you turn them into tuples, it, it reflects that as well. Um, there is 
So one thing about tuples is you can kind of unpack and unpack them into other tuples and kind of swap values and stuff. So, so a, a common uh, idiom or a useful thing that you can use tuple for, tuples for is you can like swap values. So if let's say you wanted to, let's say you have a equals 5 and b equals 1 and you wanted to switch these. And now you want b equal to 5 and a equal to 1. Okay. Um, if you were to write a program that would do something like this, you would have to set up a temporary variable. Because if you did, if um, like the wrong way, right? So if I did a equals 5 and b equals 1, and then if I said, okay, well, let b equal to a and a equal to b, right? And if I did this, then what is a going to be? a is going to be 5 and b is going to be 5, right? Because as soon as I took the, the a and 5 and I assigned it to b, and I take this and do, do it back, you know, now I've lost the, that value for 1. So, you know, one thing that, you know, kind of the old option, you do, um, you know, a equal to 5, b equal to 1, and you take the a value, the 5, store it temporarily here. You would take b, assign it to a, and then you would take that temporary value and assign it to b, right? And then so now you could swap them, and you'd get 1 and 5 for a and b. And you've successfully done this. With tuples, you can just do a, a and b, a is 5, b is 1, and then now you have this assignment and unpacking, so you can say b a is equal to a b, and this will automatically, you know, the, this will swap the values. So this is kind of a, um, just kind of a quick way to take currently existing values and then just kind of reassign them how, how you want without having to worry about like, oh, am I going to accidentally overwrite this or something like that? So this is, um, this is like a cool feature in, uh, in Python. Um, you can take, um, um, so here is um, a function, uh, the string split, right? So you take the string, so here's the email address. Um, and if you do split, what this will do is it's going to create a list, right? It creates a list where it takes the element before, you know, before the at sign, and then it takes the element after the at sign. And so what we can do is we can take the results of any kind of function that returns multiple values, in this case, um, a list, um, but it, it could be you know, anything more complicated, and we can, um, we can just unpack it into a tuple. Right? And so we could you know, take this and unpack it into the tuple where we have the username and the domain. And so now um, you name takes um, takes that, and the domain will be that, right? So, so these are kind of, uh, I guess, use cases of tuples, and I would say these are, you know, very common things. When reading through someone else's Python code, this kind of uh, functionality or or this uh, operation is very common. You're going to see this uh, quite a bit um, in in people's <coughs> use. Okay, um, so here is here's a function where we can take, um, uh, do like division, I don't know, what do we call this? <laughs> um, and so we're going to do the integer component. Uh, so this is floor division, x um, div uh, slash slash y. It does um, floor division. It's going to return the integer part. And then x mod y will re return the remainder. So if I do something like uh, like this, and oh, and I'm returning a tuple, right? I'm returning integer and remainder. So we can capture this, and we can do uh, 23 comma 5. So the integer component will be 4. After doing 23 divided by um, 5, we'll have 4, remainder 3. And we can unpack that into A and B. And so A is 4, and B is 3, OK? Um, you don't have to write this own function, because this exists <laughs> that does exactly um, what this function is. So div mod 23 comma 5 does exactly this. It, it returns a tuple with the values, the integer component, and the, uh, the remainder here. Okay. But, uh, but that's, that's basically what we have. So you'll, you'll see stuff like this um, very frequently in Python. Um, there are two methods, two methods that, uh, that tuples support. OK, wait, before I forget, let me go ahead and give you your first view quiz answer, the letter D, D as in dog. D as in dog is the uh, first view quiz answer.
Okay, so um, the tuple index uh, and tuple count, these will kind of go through the tuple and we'll find um, the location where you have um, basically information about the tuple that don't modify the tuple, right? So here's here's this t.index uh, dog. What will this return? Just say it. What? Four. Yes, yes, you, you are correct. OK. Uh, what about this? t.index um, house. This returns an error, right? I do t dot get. What about this? So you get an error, right? Uh, tuples don't have get. What 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 you what supports get? Dictionaries. Dictionaries support get. Okay. Yeah. If I did, uh, if this was a dictionary, uh, and then we would get. Uh, we would get a, a a none, okay? Um, but yeah, you can't you can't do something like this either, right? So this this would work for a dictionary, okay? And and this just says well, what are you doing, <laughs> right? It's expecting an integer. It's expecting an integer here to kind of um, I guess slice out or something, okay? All right, and then uh, the tuple tuple dot count. What's this going to return? One. How many times does five appear, right? And t dot count house says, well, that doesn't appear anywhere in the tuple. Okay. Yeah. So um, it it's a lot to keep in your head, but it's it'll be helpful if you remember, you know, for these basic data structures in Python, the list and the tuple and the Dictionary and stuff like which which methods are supported in each of these things, but yeah, it's it's kind of like building up your vocabulary, right? Anytime you learn the new language, there's part of it's learning the grammar and part of it's learning the vocabulary, and so this, this is part of what we have. All right, so here are um, here are some functions that support tuples. So these are just these aren't methods; these are just functions, and you can stick in tuples and you can stick in other iterables. Um, and uh, and they'll they'll work okay so here I've got um, so we got length sort uh, sum sorted min max and stuff like that none of these modify the list or the tuple or things like that so here's um, a tuple with digits here is a list with some words and we can say all right what's the length of the tuple and it says oh you got seven what's the sum and it can go through and as long as they're all like numeric types. It, it can do a sum, right? If you try, if you try to do sum on a, on things with words, and here it's a list, um, and it's going to um, it's going to say you can't you can't do that, okay? Um, um, all right, uh, sorted. This will uh, this will take the tuple and it will sort the values. And notice it returns a list, okay? It returns a list. So this is you know, um, again, sorted does not modify the um, the object that you give it. So you can also do sorted on a list, and it will sort the words on the list, but it won't modify the list itself. Whereas list.sort, list name, whatever object you have that's a list, you can do call dot sort, and it will um, it will sort them. Okay. So yeah, if I print out the original tuple, it's un unchanged. Here's sorted on the words. And that's fine. We can ask what's the minimum minimum value and what's the maximum value. Max, if you do it on a list of words, will give you the last word in alphabetical order, right? So, and if you do min, it will give you the first if it's in alphabetical order. All right, here is I've got two dictionaries here, um, and this one I have uh, numbers as the keys. Okay, I've got numbers one, two, and three as keys. Over here I have letters, A, B, and C as the keys. So that's the difference between dictionary number and dictionary alpha. Dictionary uh, length will give you how many items are in the dictionary. So we have a total of kind of three key value pairs. Um, 
sorted dictionary number will give you a list of the keys in sorted order. So dictionary.number will give you one, two, and three sorted. Sorted dictionary alpha will give you um, a, b, and c. And then max on any kind of dictionary will give, um, give you the kind of the maximum or the last alphabetical key value, right? So max on dictionary alpha will give you the letter C there. All right. Do I need to say anything else? Uh, yeah, length sum. So you, it will allow you to take um, the keys of a dictionary and sum them if, if it supports it. Whereas um, I'm pretty sure this will return an error here. This is like a weird thing. <laughs> Summing uh, dictionary keys. I'm trying to think when when we would want to do something like that. Uh, there's somebody can probably think of some some application for it. It's a, you know it's a little strange. Okay. Um, okay. Let's. Let's do some math operations. OK. Um, so you can take lists, tuples, and strings. And we support a lot of these kind of math operators. So multiplication takes the lists. I'm doing L1, which is ABC. And I'm saying um, multiply it by 2. So it just basically takes L1 and it adds another copy of itself. You can take L1 plus L2, and it concatenates the two together. Um, and again, with dictionaries, you can't just do, you can't, um, like if I did dictionary numeric and plus dictionary alpha, what will happen here? It's going to say you can't do that, right? You can't, you can't do the plus. What if I wanted to combine these things? What do I do? For the dictionary methods. What's the method? Dot update. Okay. Dot update. And now dictionary num numeric is no longer dictionary numeric, but I've got you know one, two, three, and then ABC as keys here. So the, the combined is gonna be the update. All right. I should go back and redefine these things. Um, okay, so here, uh, same thing with tuples. The same, same kind of things that uh, work for lists will also work for tuples. Um, here I've got uh, T1, T2. I can take the tuple and double its length. I can take the two tuples and I can concatenate them together. We're creating entirely new tuples, not modifying anything here. Um, if you try to do a list plus a tuple, this uh, you get an error. You say you can't concatenate a list. Um, to uh, you can't concatenate a tuple to a list, as you can only concatenate a list to a list or something like that. So what you can do is you can convert the tuple into a list, and that will be fine. Now, and vice versa, you can convert the list into a tuple and concatenate them together as well. Getting a price alert on Halloween costumes there. All right, um, variable length uh, arguments. Okay. Um, OK, so there, Python supports um, tuple unpacking as far as arguments in a function go. OK, so um, there is this star operator that will um, gather and unpack. OK, that will gather arguments um, into a tuple and unpack them and stuff like that. OK. Um, you could technically name this uh, however you want, but the common is star args, star args, right? So here is a function called print all args, and um, and we're going to um, and all it's going to do is it's just going to print everything in here. So this is not a not a very interesting function, okay? And I'm going to pass it uh, just a bunch of stuff here. OK, and, and if I do this, it says, oh, I don't know what you're trying to do here, OK? Because when we've defined the function, OK, we have, it, we, we have one argument. So it's expecting only one argument. 
And here, we gave it four. So it gives us an error. It says one positional argument before we're given. So I'm going to change the uh, definition of the function into star args. Okay? Star arg says, oh, you know what? You're going to give me a bunch of stuff. We're going to gather it into a tuple. Okay? And so when we do that, it gathers it into a tuple, and then it prints out the tuple. Okay? So what I can do is I'm going to create a new function, print lines. We're going to say star args. You give it multiple things. It's going to gather them into a tuple. And now I can work with this tuple. So I can say for each element in that tuple, print you know whatever that element is okay so here I've got hi goodbye and it iterates through the elements I can do print lines and um, I give it a bunch of numbers here and we get uh, it does it does <laughs> what we expect it to do okay so um, so this is um, kind of a, a, a very handy thing if you need to kind of pass arguments to a function, but you want to allow for, argue, like, let's say more than one, but you're not quite sure how many you're going to have, right? So you're going to say, okay, I mean, just give me everything you have, and we'll go ahead and just make a new data structure out of this thing, right? And then, and then we can kind of work with that. So if you give me three things, I can do it. If you give me 10 things, I can do it. Um, and you don't have to kind of uh, figure that out. Um, the the other option is uh, you can do um, you can also take a tuple, you can pass a tuple in our, as an argument and have it uh, and you can kind of explode the tuple or unpack the tuple within the argument here, right? So here, remember we have my divide, and my divide is expecting. It's expecting two values, like 23, 5, and it's going to return 4 and 3. Okay. Now, if I have a tuple with 23 and 5, okay, and I try to pass that, okay, it says um, you, you can't do that, right? Because it's seeing 23 and 5 as one element, and that one element is going into x, right? And it's saying now I need a y, and you didn't give me a y. Okay. So, so here. I can take the uh, the tuple. I can put a star here, and it's going to say, "Oh, you know what? Take this. This is a tuple, right? T is a tuple here, but unpack that, and unpack that tuple into um, twenty three and five, and, and and do it, right? So it's it's not going to work if I have twenty three five and four, right? And if I do um, my underscore divide uh, star t, what is this going to complain? Okay, it's going to say you're giving me three things, and I'm only expecting two. Okay, um, I think div mod. So let, let me go back and get um, t is twenty three and five. Is that the name of the function? Yeah, twenty three and five. I think div mod supports this already. Oh no. Uh, div mod is also expecting this, so to you to unpack the uh, the tuple. Okay, yeah. So you have to do star, star on the tuple to kind of uh, to unpack it or scatter it uh, as as arguments. So so you have gather and scatter, and the, you just invoke them both by using a star. Um, we can take uh, take lists and we can uh, zip them, or take tuples and we can zip them. Um, so if I zip a, b, and c, a string, and I have a tuple 0, 1, 2, I can zip them. And it just it gives me back a zip object, again, uh, which are basically lazy instructions. And it'll say, I'll do it when, when you want me to do it, but just not now. Um, so we can say, all right, you know what? I want you to iterate through all the items in the zip and just print out what you have. Okay, When you do that, you're going to get a, a bunch of tuples, right? You're going to get a zipped with um, a and zero as a tuple, then b and one as a tuple, and c and two as a tuple. Right. So, so um, when you kind of iterate through all of the items in the tuple, you get all of these, or iterate all of the items in the zip object, it returns a whole bunch of of tuples. 
Okay, so zip zip object is a kind of um, iterator in that uh, uh, any object that iterates through a sequence, uh, they're similar to lists, but you can't use an index to select an element from an iterator. Um, but if you want, you can take it and put it inside a list. So I could take this zip thing and put it inside a list, and it will do that. Um, So what will happen, so if you have, you can zip two strings of the same length, right? So I could do list zip, um, and I can do bob and um, cat, okay? Maybe we'll do dog and cat, right? And, oh, expected, okay. And it will match all of these things up, okay? But what if I take these two words, which are of different length, Okay, um, then um, then it just drops this last one. Okay, so the the e l k the the k and the n get matched up, but the last letter e just disappears. Okay, it's like whoops. All right, so here is kind of uh, the result. This um, you know once you have this list of tuples, then you can you know, do whatever you want with it, right? So you can, so here I've, I, have, I have something dumb. I can say print number, but I can say print um, the number is, whoops, I need to put this in quotes. The number is number. The number is number. Uh, and the letter is letter, and we'll say separator is equal to nothing here, right? So we can kind of go through and do whatever it is that we want, right? And I can take the letter and I can do letter dot upper or something, I don't know, whatever you want. <laughs> So, okay, um, multiple iterables, you can zip them all together, all right, and all of these things will be interwoven. So everything is length five, A, B, C, D, E, range five, apple, banana, coconut, date, elderberry. I was looking up for a fruit that started with an E. And then uh, two, three, five, seven, eleven, those are what, our first five prime numbers. Okay, and then if we zip them all together, what are we going to get? We're going to get a, a list of length five, and each of those things will have four, will be um, a tuple with four items in it, right? So it'll be A, zero, apple, two, and B, one, banana, three, and so on and so forth. And so, so now that you have that, you can do whatever you want with this. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is... Um, one thing that can be a handy thing to do is like if you have two tuples, you want to just see like if two values are in like the same position, okay? And we can kind of um, iterate through the tuple. So we can zip the two tuples together and then we can iterate uh, through the elements, right? And so we're going to unpack each element in this zipped thing and we're going to just see, okay, if does this ever happen where the elements x and y are equal to each other? And if so, just uh, return true and, um, and quit the function. And if you get through the entire thing and it never happens, then return false and quit the function. Okay? So we're going to say A, B, C, and D, E, F. Is there any match there? So it goes A and D, nope. B and E, nope. C and F, nope. It returns false, right? A, B, C, D, E, C. That's going to match because uh, A and D is a no, B and E is a no, but C and C is a match, so so we're good there. Uh, what about A B C D D C B A? Match or no match? No match, right? So um, yeah, 
A, A and D, B and C, C and B, and D and A, no match. If we did uh, A, B, C, D, E, and E, D, C, B, A, there would be a match at the C, but right here, no match. Okay, uh, enumerate. Enumerate is kind of like zip, except um, it's going to zip it with basically a range <coughs> object. So here if I do, uh, so you can imagine, like if you wanted to, um, uh, let me just show you. <laughs> okay, so if you do enumerate, again, it's very much like zip in that it's lazy and it's not going to do it until you ask for it. So, but if you do say, okay, let's take morning and do it, basically it's going to zip a range object uh, of the same length as morning. So it's going to, it's basically like doing what's the length of morning, create a range object of that length, and zip it with morning, okay? And so basically it's going to say, okay, well, morning, there's uh, seven characters, so, you know, range, uh, seven, and then zip that with morning, and you're going to get zero, M, one, O, two R and so on and so forth, okay? So enumerate is kind of like a little shortcut of like zip, zip a range object. Because there's a lot of times where you just need to like, I guess, enumerate all of these things. And it's a good, good verb. <laughs> so, right, A, B, C, D, E, z, z, uh, list with that. Um, and we get this, and it's basically, again, um, zipping a range four. So pretty much you get the same results as this, okay? So, so enumerate's a... Handy little shortcut, returns a bunch of these tuples that you can then do whatever it is you need to do with that. Okay. Um, dictionaries. Um, the Basically, when you do dictionary items, so remember you have these view objects. Okay, dictionary items is basically like a sequence of tuples, but it's dynamic. So as the dictionary updates, dictionary.items um, will, will update as well. And so... Um, you know, you can take this and you can always unpack them into the key and the value, and then you can do whatever it is you need with those that key value pair. So here I just did print, but of course, there's many more interesting functions that you can do other than just print them out. But the idea is you, you can at least um, iterate through them and go do whatever it is you need to do, right? Here's um, the dictionary. We can uh, enumerate this, and, um, and it creates... Basically, you can enumerate these, and then you'll get um, a, a dictionary with all of those keys, right? Um, integers as keys. Swap the keys and elements in a dictionary. So I think we talked about building um, an inverse dictionary. Um, but basically, here's my um, dictionary D. And what we're going to do is we're going to just, we swapped all of these things. And, um, and that comes out fine, and that's basically um, doing that. Now, um, oh, and then I think I showed you this already when we were talking about dictionaries, is you can, um, you can create a dictionary in a few ways, and if you have a list of tuples or basically a zip, the result of a zip object, you can create a dictionary and it will do that. Um, and then you can also, again, just zip things together and create a dictionary out of your zipped you know, whatever it is that you've zipped together. So because tuples are immutable, you are allowed to use tuples as keys to a dictionary. And you might feel like, that seems like a weird thing to do. Why would I want the keys of my dictionary to be a tuple, right? I, you know, when you think about keys, you want the, your key to be something that's easy to look up to, uh, to find, right? So an example, is you could have a function, so like, uh, um, you could kind of imagine a table where it's like, um, look up the value in this row and this column, right? So you want, might want to look up some value based on coordinates, okay? Or you could imagine some kind of two, uh, um, a function where it takes two inputs and it returns one, okay? And so a dictionary could be useful. So let's say you have um, let's say you have a complicated function where you plug in one number. It it takes two numbers in and it outputs a number. But let's say it takes like a long time to compute that number, right? So you plug in uh, x equals ten and y equals five, and you have to do I don't know some complicated thing that takes maybe like 
um, you know, five seconds to compute that answer. And you don't want to have to keep waiting around for it. So what we can do is we can kind of create almost like a lookup table with the dictionary. And so we say, if we ever, like, we're going to compute x10 and y equal to 5, and, you know, the, the result of this function is, you know, 75, and we're going to store that. And later on, if anybody asks, um, what is the result of the function when we have 10 and 5, we'll just say, oh, you know what, I've already computed that. The answer is 75, okay? And if somebody says, okay, what about um, 11 and 4? And you go, well, I didn't compute that, so wait five seconds, let me do the math. Okay, here's the answer. But you know what, I'm going to write it down, I'm going to store it, and then I can look this up, right? And so that, that's uh, a useful case where you want the dictionary keys to be a tuple where you can kind of take in two values and you can look up the corresponding thing, right? So here, um, we're going to write a function. It takes x and y in, and we're going to gather x and y into a tuple. And if this tuple, we're going to, we have a dictionary called known, and you know we started off with the tuple 0, 0 as a key and the corresponding value is 0, okay? And here I'm, you know, my function here is very simple, x squared plus 2y. Uh, but you could imagine something complicated where maybe it takes a long time to compute out your values. And we're going to just say, okay, well, let's look up, let's look this up. If, if we ask for 0, 0, is it in there? Um, and just to kind of let us know that we are looking up the dictionary, we're going to say value already exists in the dictionary and we are going to look up that value t, right? So using the dictionary function to kind of subset or look up the value, retrieve the value in there, we, uh, we can do, um, we do that or we can do got, dot get, okay? Um, and if it's not known, then we are going to say a value must be calculated. We will go through the computation of x squared plus two times y, and then we're gonna store that value um, as a new entry in the dictionary. And, um, and so we're going to constantly be kind of updating this dictionary. Um, and here uh, we'll, we'll also return the value. OK, so right now our dictionary only has one thing in it, OK, 0, 0. Here I'm going to ask for what is the value associated with 0, 0. And it says, well, that already exists in the dictionary, and the value is 0. Okay. If I do um, 1, 2, the first time I do it, it's going to say the value must be calculated. It calculates it out, and it returns 5. The, uh, the second time I ask for f12, it says, oh, you know what? We've already done that. That exists in the dictionary. And, um, and if I ask what's inside the dictionary, now we have two entries in the dictionary. We have an entry for 0, 0, and an entry for 1, 2. And we can kind of keep adding to the dictionary. You know, 3 and 4, that has to be calculated, 17, and now my dictionary now has, has three entries. And as we go along, this dictionary will continue building, and we can kind of continue looking up values from, from the dictionary anytime, anytime we want, right? So we can, I, I can do it manually, right, like this, and we can say, okay, what's the value associated there? Um, and if I put in something here, then, then I get a key error, and so using this using this function to kind of look up values in the dictionary can be a helpful thing. Okay, how many view quiz answers have I given you? Just one? Just one? Okay, let me give you your last two. Last two are A and B. A as an apple and B as in bear. A as an apple, B as in bear. Okay, and that's all I have uh, planned for you guys for today. Um, so we'll end here and we will see you on Friday.